I'm most excited to be here. I'm not gonna lie to you, and this is not a lie. This is not a lie, because I wouldn't lie from here. I am so excited to be back at Royals to be speaking. I think I, think I spoke here once before, maybe the second year that I'd been away. And uh, to me, this is like, this is just such a great honor that I get to come back uh, where it all started for me. And I reckon where it's all started for so many of you. And so thank you again, Pastor Adam and Fitcher for having me. Can we thank them and can we give them a round of applause for being the best senior pastors in Cairns? Easily, easily, easily. Still my pastors, but also my parent-in-laws and I'm, I'm really blessed. I'm so, so blessed. I've got a message on my heart tonight, and if you're taking notes, the title of it is just simply this, Beyond the Gates. I'd love it if you could write that down, Beyond the Gates. I think this might be a message, can I just preface it by saying this? This might be a message that I would encourage you to write down. Um, If you're not a note taker, don't feel bad, because neither am I, Uh, but there are some times where I'm really feeling like I need to take some notes to go back to, so uh, I would encourage you to take some notes tonight. We're reading from Ephesians 2, 16 to 18. And I like this version the best. It says this, Christ brought us together through his death on the cross. The cross got us to embrace, and that was the end of hostility. Christ came and preached peace to you outsiders and peace to us insiders. He treated us as equals. Everybody say equals. Come on, everybody say equals. Come on, I need you to stay with me tonight. And so made us equals. Through him, we both share the same spirit and have equal access. Everybody say access. (laughs) We have equal access to the Father. Did you know access, access changes everything? Especially if you were an outsider. Access changes everything. I remember I was... um, flying a lot at one point in time, and I would always see the Virgin Lounge at the airport. Has anybody walked past the Virgin Lounge or the Qantas Lounge? I would always walk past there, and I would always go, man, I would love to have access into that lounge, but you have to fly a certain amount of times in order to have access into the lounge. And in the lounge was a buffet. Now, buffet, free coffee, free food, free drinks. And I remembered for ages... I really wanted access into the lounge, and so guess what I did? I linked my credit card to get points in order for me to get into the lounge. Now, some of you might say, Isaiah, that's a bit extreme. And I would say to you tonight, you're right. (laughs) It is a bit extreme, but I didn't care. I wanted to get into the lounge. I did whatever I could. And then one day I got this notification on my email and it said, Mr. Mr. Isaiah Simmons, which by the way, if anyone ever calls you by email, Mr. Isaiah Simmons or Mrs., it's either really bad news or really good news. And that day it was fantastic news because it told me that I have access into the Virgin Lounge Club. And I used to see those people roll into the lounge clubs. They would have their Samsonite bags, you know, the the really bougie bags. They would have like their blazers hanging off the bags. And they just walked with a little, like almost like a, a level of arrogance. It used to frustrate me. And then I became one of those people. Absolutely loved it. I got into the virtual and I had like, I got my silver status, which means I have like four passes a year into there. And I remember I was like, man, I cannot wait to get into the lounge because let's be honest, I'm sick of sitting at the gates. I'm sick of sitting at the gates. You sit at the gates and you're right next to somebody. They're coughing all over the place. They're sneezing. It's uncomfortable. They're looking at you like, why are you sitting next to me? You're looking at them like, why are you sitting next to me? I remember when I had access into the lounge, I was like, I would walk in, I'd stroll into the lounge, and I would go straight to the buffet. I'm going to be honest with you. I was disappointed with the buffet. The buffet was bad, but the free coffee was unbelievable. I'll tell you what was even better than just the free coffee. Listen to me. It was the amount of room that was in the Virgin Lounge. There was seats galore. It wasn't like the old days where I had to stand sort of squashed up at the gates waiting for me to be able to leave to go to Cairns. No, 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 no. I had room. And I realized at that point, access for me changed my whole flying experience. What was once a dreaded flying experience, I had to sit next to somebody at a gate, I don't have priority check-in. After experiencing the Virgin Lounge, 
I had the greatest experience that I could ever possibly experience. And this is what I said. The access that I had in that lounge changed my whole flying experience. And I would say this to you as a Christian, or maybe you're not a Christian, but somebody who is considering faith. Access to the presence of God changes all of us. In fact, access to the presence of God changes everything. Access to the presence of God changes the way I see today. Access to the presence of God changes the way I see yesterday. Access to the presence of God changes the way that I see my future. And I would tell you tonight, if you do not embrace the access that you have to the presence of God, you will not be changed. You just won't be. And some of us tonight are doing everything that we can to change. When I would say that the real changing point for you is accept the invitation that you have access 24-7 to the presence of God. I want to talk to you from Isaiah chapter 6, one of my favorite Bible chapters in all of the Bible, and not just because it's my name. I'm not that arrogant. Um, but it is just one of my favorite stories in the Bible. It says this in Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, this is Isaiah speaking, a teenager, late teens, he says this. I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. And above him was seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their face, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another this, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. And this is what Isaiah said. After seeing God, after seeing like all of these incredible things in the throne room, this is what he says. Woe is me, I am ruined, for I'm a man with unclean lips, and I live amongst the people with unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. To which some of you might say, oh, that's a bit of an overreaction. Why is he saying, woe is me, for I am ruined? I'll tell you why. Because in that moment, Isaiah realized, I'm a sinner, and I'm in the glory of God. Sin and God cannot coexist. Jesus hasn't even come yet. And so he says, woe is me, I am ruined. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongues of the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, see, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sins are atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, who shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, this is Isaiah, here I am, send me. Listen, Isaiah had access to another world. And everything changed for Isaiah, not because he was awesome, not because he was talented, but because he had access to the throne of God. He, just, he didn't just see the Lord, he saw heaven, he saw, he saw beings flying around. And this is what happened, and this is what I love. His lens was informed by the company that he kept and by himself. What did he say? He says, woe is me, I'm ruined. I'm a man with unclean lips. In other words, I'm a sinner, and I live amongst people with unclean lips. Anybody here got friends with unclean lips? Nobody. You're all liars. <laughs> there is somebody that has an unclean lip. Isaiah is informed of himself by the company that he keeps and by the sin that he is battling, and his lens was informed by those two things. But listen, in a moment, Isaiah went from saying, woe is me for I'm ruined. I'm a man with unclean lips. In a moment, he went from woe is me to here I am, God, send me. What happened in that moment? Access to the presence of God changed Isaiah. The Bible says that a seraphim, one of those big heavenly beings, flew up to him and seared his lips, which was his point of sin, and then all of a sudden atoned the sin that he was battling with, and then... The question was posed, who shall I send who will go for us? And Isaiah said, God, here I am. Send me. What, what happened in this moment? Did Isaiah go through Bible college? No. Did Isaiah do anything particularly awesome? No, 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 no. He was caught up in the presence of God. And this is what I've noticed. And this is how our lives change. When we have access to the presence of God and we surrender the things that are binding us. Access to the presence of God and surrender will do wonderful things. Isaiah said, woe is me, I am ruined. And in a moment, he said, here I am, God, send me. Do you know so many times our lens, and when I say lens, what I mean is the way that we see the world. We can be like Isaiah, 
The way that I see the world, I'm informed by the company that I keep or I'm informed by my sin. We all have this problem. And can I just talk about this really quickly about company that you keep? One of the greatest ways to disrupt the God character in your life is to remain about, uh, remain with people who do not believe in God. If you want to disrupt the God character in your life, just be friends with people who don't honor Him. Just be friends with people who do not believe in Him. Just keep hanging around. Psalm 1-1 is not just a suggestion. Psalm 1-1 is a commandment. And we got to make sure that we are surrounding ourselves with people who are lifting us up who were helping us, who were praying for us. And Isaiah had this issue. But when he had access into the presence of God, all of a sudden, his sin was atoned for and he had vision and mission. Who are we without the presence of God? Who are we without access into the Holy? Who are we? We're absolutely nothing or nobody. I'll give you another example. Luke 19, verse eight. I love this one. It was Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Here now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I'll pay back four times the amount. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is the son of Abraham, for the son of man came to seek and save those who were lost. I'll give you a backstory about Zacchaeus, just in case you don't know him. Zacchaeus was a crook, terrible, terrible man. In fact, he was the most unpopular man, I reckon, in Jericho. He was a tax collector. He would rip people up. He would do things. He would knock on the door and say, tax time. Then he would put his hand out and say, and some. He was rich. He was wealthy. And he struck fear into the people of Jericho. He climbs a tree one day because the Bible says that he is short. And Jesus identifies him and says, can I have dinner at your place tonight? Zacchaeus says, sure. You can have dinner at my place tonight. All of a sudden, at the table where they're eating, Zacchaeus realizes this is not an ordinary dinner. In fact, this is not an ordinary person. And in the presence of God, Zacchaeus went from being the most crooked man in Jericho to the most generous man in Jericho. Why? Because he had access. Access changes everything. Access changes me. Access changes my heart. Access changes the sins that I'm dealing with. Access changes everything. Zacchaeus went like this, abruptly stood up and said, half of what I own, I want to give it away. And if I've stolen anything, I want to pay it back four times the amount. I mean, how amazing that the presence of God could turn somebody so guilty, somebody so, so practice thievery, basically, to become the most generous man in Jericho. What is that? It's the presence of God. Access changes us. It changes everything. His heart was surrendered to him in a moment. And everything changed. Do you know I've noticed, listen to me, sometimes um, this type of access comes through what I call divine interruptions. Has anybody been interrupted by the Holy Spirit before? No one. Okay, I'll tell you what it looks like, and then I reckon most of you will say, no, 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 I have before. I remember for me, I, I used to go to this Filipino restaurant just down the road, right, in the city, and I loved it. I loved it. And I loved the lady that was there as well. The lady that was there was the most beautiful lady ever. She was like maybe, maybe 55, and she was beautiful. She'd make the best food, this curry, and I'd walk in, and she'd say, hey, darling, every time I walk in, hey, darling, I'd be like, oh, yeah, here we go. I'm getting an extra potato cake today. This is fantastic. And I'd roll into the, to the, to the shop, and she would, but listen, my heart, something was in my heart for this particular lady. I couldn't shake it. There was something that God wanted to do with this lady, but I ignored it. Every single time I went in there, it was an interruption, but I ignored it. And I remembered I got to the last day of me being there for maybe like three months and the shop was shut, closed, for sale. And I was like, oh, man, this whole time I felt an interruption by the Holy Spirit to talk to her about him and I didn't do it. I missed it. A year later, I'm preaching at a church in Tully. Tully, the most random place ever. I'm preaching in Tully, right? And I'm there and I'm ready to go and I, 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 I think I'm getting ready to preach and I noticed a lady who was familiar walk into the room. And I went to myself, hang on a second, Father Lord, that is, that is, that is the Filipino lady from the restaurant in Cairns. 
And I thought to myself, no, 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 this, this is too good to be true. This is too good to be true. She walked in and I met her and I said to her, oh, is this your church? This is what she said. I've never been to church before. This is the first time I've ever come to church. And I went like this. Isn't it unbelievable that even in sometimes our disobedience, God can still make a way when it seems like there wasn't a way. So I went like this. I want to preach my heart out this Sunday. And I preached my heart out. We get to the salvation message and um, every eye closed. And I'm believing that she's going to get saved. Every, hands go up, but her hand didn't go up. And I went, oh man, I missed it. And I got really upset and I started packing my stuff away. And she comes up to me at the very end of the service weeping. And she said, Isaiah, I didn't want to put my hand up because I was embarrassed, but I want to give my life over to Jesus today. And isn't it interesting that sometimes as a result of having access into the presence of God, things just start changing. We don't start seeing people the way that we see them. We see them the way that Jesus sees them. I don't start, listen, I just thought that I was getting good Filipino food. But because I had access to the presence of God, I started seeing things through the lens of the way that he sees things. Hello, listen to me. We need to be familiar with the presence of God. And the presence of God is not something that we are just going to do right here. We can get caught up in the presence of God in our car. We can get caught up in the presence of God doing laundry. We can get caught up in the presence of God worshipping to ourselves. We can get caught up so many times. Access changes everything. Do you know that um, the reason why I preach so passionately about this is because it wasn't always like this. And this is why we're talking about the cross tonight, because access like this, 24-7 access, it wasn't always like this. Like some of you just think, man, I could always just go into the Virgin Lounge. No, 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 no. There was a time, listen, where you couldn't even be in the same room as God. There was a time where only the elect few could experience the presence of God. And so some of you need to remember this, not just because, well, I think it gives us perspective. In the Old Testament, no person had access to the Father with a few exceptions. Listen to Abraham. He enjoyed a measure of access to the Lord, and he was called a friend of God. He enjoyed, listen, a measure of access, and he was called a friend of God. He heard from the Lord. He talked to him. He even had communion with him. Yet Abraham remained outside the veil, right? Even though he was a friend of God, he had never really had access to the Holy of Holies. Even though Abraham was counted as a friend, he never had the type of access that we might have today. Why? Because the veil of separation had not been ripped into two yet. Listen, at one point in Israel's history, God declared that he would speak through prophets, through visions and dreams. In Numbers 12, verse 6, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him in a vision, and I will speak unto him in a dream. But the rest of Israel knew nothing of this kind of access. The Lord said to them, there shall be a continual burnt offering throughout your generations at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord, where I will meet you, and I will speak to you there. And there I will meet you with the children of of Israel. In other words, this is what used to happen in the Old Testament. They were people that could observe God from a distance, but they never were able to experience the presence of God. I'll say it again. They could observe God from a distance, but they could never really experience the presence of God. No one was allowed to enter into the Holy of Holies where God abode. Only the high priests were allowed to go. One day of one day of the year, they were allowed to go into the Holy of Holies, and that was the Day of the Atonement. And so the people had to bring their sacrifices to the door of the tabernacle. They couldn't even go all the way in. Listen, they could peek through the door, but they couldn't behold the presence of God fully. They could only wonder at the majesty of who God is and, and, who God, is, and God dwelling on the inside. And this was very restricted access. It was as if God was saying to them, come to my front door and I'll meet with you. There's a family member and I'm not going to say who, but I remember even a, a family member that would greet me at my car to stop me from coming into their house. Is there anybody that's got a family member like that in the room? Anybody at all? It's just me. Okay, fantastic. 
they would open their door and get to my car so there wasn't even a millimeter of space for me to be able to go inside. I mean, I could observe them from a distance, but I couldn't really experience the hospitality of the home. In the same way in the Old Testament, it was designed like this. Why? Because Jesus hadn't died yet and made a way for you and I. And so this is why we have to understand that access is so important because we never used to have it. And then let's fast forward a little bit of years and let's talk about Jesus. Some of you are like, man, I wish I was at the same day as Jesus. But even then, can I just tell you something? There was a limited access with Jesus. You would have had to have been the Samaritan woman that pushed through and were able to touch the hem of his garment. You would have had to have been Zacchaeus who climbed up a tree and got the attention of God. You would have had to have been somebody who was able to get his attention because even then, he couldn't be everywhere 24-7. I mean, limited access. But now we're living post-cross. And Jesus said this, it is better that I go because I'm sending an advocate to you. The advocate is the Holy Spirit. And now because Jesus died and made a way, you and I have 24-7 access into the presence of God. It changes everything, doesn't it, when we start to realize, man, I, I never used to have this access, but the problem is I reckon some of us are still observers when God, God has actually called us to have access. Some of us are still peeking through the door. Some of us are still hoping that our deeds are gonna make us worthy to enter into the Holy of Holies. After that little teaching, I've already shown you that it had nothing to do with you that the veil was split in two. It had everything to do with the sacrifice of his son, which is why the veil that separated the Holy of Holies and us is now completely split in two. Listen to this. Finally, in one sudden moment, Jesus provided total unrestricted access to the Father. Matthew 27, 50 to 51. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple, listen, was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. But some of us are still living like we don't have access. Some of us are still trying to change ourselves. Some of us are still trying to be worthy. Some of us are hoping that our sacrifices, whatever it might be, is going to be pleasing to God. When in any of that teaching did any of the veil being split in two have anything to do with you? It had everything to do with Jesus. And so I hope that when we see the cross, we don't see a moment in time that was awesome. I hope that when we see the cross, we go, because of the cross, it's changed everything for you and I. Because of the cross, now I have access to the presence of God. I have access to the throne of God. Sam, I want you to come up and, and it's just Sam's fine. The band doesn't need to come. Um, the Bible talks about us having access to the throne. And I just wanna, I want, I want you to picture this with me. Come on a journey with me and listen to this. Our heavenly father sits on a throne in eternity. You, some of you are like, what does God the father do? What does he look like? Are you ready? The Bible says that he sits on a throne in eternity. That's what he does, he sits and at his right hand sits his son, our blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus. Outside this throne room are gates. Outside this throne room are gates, which are open to all who are in Christ. At any time, day or night, around the clock, listen to what we can do. Listen, 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 listen. We can bypass the guardian angels, the seraphims, and all the heavenly hosts to boldly enter the throne of grace, which is our Father's throne. Christ has provided us direct access to the Father to receive all the mercy and all the grace that we need, no matter what our circumstance looks like. Can I tell you something? The main character, so to speak, of your story is not you. It's Jesus. He is the main character of our story. He is the main person of our story. It's no longer about my calling. 
It's no longer about what I can do for God. No, 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 no. It has always been about Jesus. It's always been about Him. And I think sometimes we can get confused in our, in our pursuit of faith where we start to think it's about all these other things. No, 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 no. It's about the cross. And because of the cross, everything has changed for you and I. Access was determined by Jesus' death and resurrection, not our good deeds. I want to give you a couple of points to leave with. And the first one is this. Access, ready? It confronts my lens. Confronts the way that I see things. Because I have access to the presence of God, listen, I don't see today the same. I don't see yesterday the same. I don't see that person that's annoying me the same. I don't see that unforgiveness the same. Because I have access to the presence of God, everything begins to change. Access confronts my lens. We need to have access to the presence of God. Just like Isaiah had access to the throne of God. All of a sudden, guess what? All of a sudden, guess what he was aware of? He was no longer aware of his sin. He was no longer aware of his shortcomings. He was like, here I am, God, send me. We need to have access to the presence and to the power of God. I want to ask you a question tonight. Have we forgotten about our access in all of the doing and all of the stuff? Have we just forgotten about the power of sitting at the feet of Jesus? Have we forgotten the power of the access of the throne room of God? Sometimes, I'm going to be honest with you, I forget. I forget. Sometimes I do forget. And then there are moments where God captures my heart. The presence of God hits me. And I'm like, oh my goodness, all of a sudden everything begins to change. Why? Because access changes everything. Access changes the way that you see situations. But even more importantly, access changes you. Have we forgotten that we have access into the throne of God? I'm not talking about your quiet time, by the way. Listen, I'm not talking about your quiet time. I'm not talking about your study. All those things are amazing and we have to do them. I'm talking about you just being caught up in the presence of God. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about you doing something in order for God to come. I'm talking about you just being aware that He's already there. Access changes everything. I'll tell you how it changed me. Saturday night, regular night at the Simmons household. Renee was cooking, which it's not like I cook sometimes too, but this particular Saturday, Renee was cooking and uh, I looked outside and I saw our garden and uh, we were listening to worship music. We listened to worship music and I looked outside and have you ever had that moment where you've just been aware of the presence of God? In a moment, I got caught up. I started to cry, just being aware of the presence of God. I started to weep. I started to realize that, hang on a second, God is mindful of me. The presence of God changes us. But I think sometimes we forget that because of the cross, we have 24-7 access. Can you imagine having a key to the most powerful room that you can go to, where everything changes, but we wouldn't use it? Can you imagine having a key that if you go into that room, your perspective changes, the hatred you have to your friend, it goes. The unforgiveness you have to your worker, it goes. But so many of us are living with the key in our pocket, but we're not putting it in the door. Access changes it all. And some of you are trying to change yourself. Can I tell you something? Enter the throne room of grace boldly. And that's where the presence of God changes you from the inside out. Some of you tonight, you've got an immovable stone in your heart of unforgiveness and you're like, I've tried everything. I've confessed, I've done everything. It's access into the presence of God that alleviates the unforgiveness. Access changes everything. It changes the way that I see things. The moments where God breaks your heart for what breaks His. The moment where you realize, man, it's not about what it's about. It's always been about Him. Everything that I do, it's been about Him. The work that I do, it's been about Him. The relationships that I have, it's been about Him. The moments where He lifts your weary soul. Have you ever had that? Where where, where you've had a weary soul 
and the presence of God has just lifted it. I'm talking about the moments where he quietly whispers one word and it changes everything. I'm talking about the moments where he gives you the supernatural strength to go on. You will not find that in a podcast. You will not find that in a worldly book. You will only find that in the presence of God. And we have 24-7 access because of the cross. 24-7 access because of the cross. This access changes everything. I want to be caught up. Listen, I just want to be caught up in the wonder and the awe of who God is. That's what I want. I want to be caught up in that David moment where he says, who am I that you are mindful of me? I want to be caught up in just the awe of God. And you can even feel the room begin to change. When you just start to think, who are we that God, you would prepare a way for me? Who are we, God, that you would love me, that you would make a, that you would prepare a home in eternity for me? Who are we? I just pray that we would get back to that place where we are just caught up in the awe and wonder of God. And I haven't even asked him for anything yet. I haven't even asked him for anything. God, you are just worthy of all of my praise. You're worthy of all of my attention. I wonder if maybe just for a bit we can just put the list away and realize that in the presence of God, the access that we have, all He wants is our affection. All He wants is your heart. All He wants is your love. And some of you are you doing everything. I've ticked every roster. I've done everything. All those things are great. But He wants your affection, number one. He wants your affection, number one. Because of the cross, He has provided us access and access changes everything. And too many times we live life through a distorted lens. A distorted lens. It's not a, it's not a lens that's been washed and cleaned by the presence of God. It's a lens that was the hurt of yesterday. It's the lens that was the offense of three years ago. It's the lens of being let down. We see life through that. And when we operate through that lens, we forget about our access. We forget about the invitation. We just start living life and not the whole life that God has called us to live. We've done all the religious things. We've done all the things. But, but really, if we can be honest, our heart hasn't been moved. We haven't been moved by the presence of God. Why? Because we haven't had access. We haven't had access. We haven't been caught up in the wonder and the awe of who God is. In John 5, 2 to 9, it says, Now there was in Jerusalem by the sheep gate, a pool in Aramaic called Bethsaida, which has five roofed colonnades. And in these lay multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. And one man was there who had been invalid for 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be healed? The sick man answered, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I'm going, and I know you know the story, but listen, and, and while I'm going, Another steps down before me and Jesus said to him, get up, take your bed and walk. And at once the man was healed and he took up his bed and walked. And now that day was the Sabbath. This man saw his healing through a distorted lens. He said, if I could only just get to the pool where everybody else is, that's where I'm going to see the breakthrough. If I could just get to that area, not even realizing that the way maker, miracle worker, God of miracles was standing right in front of them. He said through a distorted lens, he was like, if I could just get to the pool, and I'll be honest with you, that's some of us. If I could just get to that next relationship, maybe I'll find wholeness. If I could just get to this next place of freedom, maybe I'll find this. If I could just get over here, if I could just do this, if I could just do that, if I could just do better. And we've tried it all and we tried everything, not realizing that the answer is right in front of us. His name is Jesus. Jesus said one word to that man and what robbed him of 38 years in a moment, he was healed. Look at what access can do to a person. So this is what I would encourage you to do tonight. Have the conviction to say this. I don't want to be an observer anymore to the presence of God. I want to experience the presence of God. And some of you were like, no, 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 I can't experience it. I'm too dirty. I'm too broken. I'm too messed up. I just gave you a whole teaching that said, this presence of God access has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with God. 
And so this, this is good news, by the way. I think that's why we've called it the Good News Convention. Because this is the greatest news ever. There is nothing that you can offer God for you to have access other than your life. Say, God, here I am. This is me. Here I am. We've tried it all, but it's the access that changes a person. When have we been like Isaiah, caught up in the presence of God? When have we been like Zacchaeus, overwhelmed by the presence of God? When have I looked at something impossible and then all of a sudden been caught up in the presence of God? I want to land on this scripture that says this. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. I'll say it again. And this is wrapping up the whole message. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. So because of what Jesus has done, this is what he's saying to you tonight. Come boldly to the throne of grace where you might receive mercy and grace. Listen, because of what Jesus has done, the invitation to you tonight is come boldly to the throne. You have access to the throne and you will obtain mercy and grace in your time of need. Has anybody here needed mercy and grace in a time of need? And you felt too bad to go to God. You've gone, oh no, God, I haven't really spoken to you lately. Uh -uh. Because of the cross, because you're in Christ, the invitation is this. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace where we might receive mercy and grace for our time of need. We will no longer be observers, no more. As of, as of today, I'm not being an observer anymore. I want to experience the presence of God. I want to be caught up in the wonder and the awe of who God is. Let's close our eyes just for a moment. Holy Spirit, we want to be moved by you. Holy Spirit, we want to be moved by your presence. And so God, right across this place, Lord, I thank you that you were unlocking doors that have been closed. The lie of the enemy has said to so many people, I cannot, I can't go to the throne of grace. Look at me. When God, you would say, look at my son. And so God, we fix our eyes on your son tonight and we thank you that because of the cross, because of sacrifice, God, we can boldly enter the throne of grace, which means beyond the gates, I pass the seraphim, I pass the guardian angels, and I am right in the presence of God where I will obtain mercy and grace in my time of need. There are people in this room that need mercy and grace, and you've tried to get it from everywhere else, but the invitation for you tonight is to come boldly into the throne of grace. He loves you so much. We've got the key in our pocket and we refuse to unlock the door. Therefore, come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy and grace in your time of need. If you're in this room tonight and you're like, Isaiah, I made it about something it's not about and I need to get caught up in the wonder and the awe of God again. God's starting to break your heart. God's starting to move in your seat. You're feeling a tug. It's like, oh my God, I remember this. I remember this. It's the Holy Spirit. It's His love. If that's you tonight and you're like Isaiah, that is me. Remember what the Scriptures say, boldly. So don't go like, oh, I don't know if it's, no, 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 boldly. If that's you, give me a wave right now, boldly. Give me a wave. Yep, 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 boldly. Yep, 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 quickly, boldly. That's me, yes, yes. I want to obtain the mercy and grace that I need, yes. Yes, God's moving on your heart. Is that you? Yes, 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 yes. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. I want you to come to the front. We want to pray for you. We want to lay hands on you. Please do not hesitate. Please do not hesitate. If you put your hand up, just make your way. There were hands going up everywhere. We have learned something tonight. Boldly enter the throne of grace where I can obtain mercy and grace for my time of need. What are we ashamed about? This is where we get changed. This is where access changes everything. Come on, there were more of you that put your hand up. Just make your way to the front. Don't hesitate. 
God's moving on your heart. Amazing. Amazing. Why don't we all stand to our feet just at this moment? Come on, stand up, stand up, just where you are, right now, if you're able to. Awesome. By the way, just before we move on to this next part, if you need mercy and grace tonight, just come boldly if that's you. Because we're going to move on from here. I don't want anybody to miss out. You want to obtain mercy and grace for your time of need. If that's you, just come. Just come. Access changes everything. I feel particularly there's a young man here where it's almost like a stone, it's a barrier. I just feel like the love of God has already started moving that. He's already started melting that away. For that particular young man, the invitation from God to you tonight is this, boldly come to the throne of grace where you might obtain mercy and grace. If that's you tonight, particularly, and you're like, Isaiah, I don't know, just come to the front if that's you. Particularly, I felt it was a young man. If that's you, just make your way to the front right now. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Amazing. Just with our hands, just with our eyes closed and hands out. Can we do that? These guys at the front, could you put your hands out just like you're receiving something from God? Our prayer team's going to come around and start to pray for people. God, we need your mercy. God, we need your grace. And so God, boldly we enter tonight. Boldly we enter the throne of grace. God, we come. We come to you. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would do what only you can do. Unforgiveness, Lord, whatever it might be. God, we're praying, Lord, that you would shift these things in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we ask, Lord, for the stone, Lord, of bitterness, the stone of unforgiveness. Whatever it might be, God, we're asking, Lord, would you move it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If we could just get some of our prayer team just to start to minister to some of these guys, that would be fantastic. Yeah, that would be great. That would be awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, we're going to worship, and I'm just believing mercy and grace, mercy and grace. is 
Thank you, Jesus. You know, just with um, just with our eyes closed, just for one last moment, if we could do this, this would be great. Maybe you're in the room tonight and you're sure that during this time of me speaking and communicating, you've just felt a prompting that you need to get your life right with Jesus. You felt a prompting. And don't talk to anybody, by the way. This is just a moment between you and God. And maybe tonight you're like, Isaiah, this, this is me. I, I need to get my life right with Jesus. Like I need to, I cannot leave here. I've heard about the cross, but I could say I don't have access, but I want to secure that access. I want to have the Holy Spirit. I want to have the new life that is found in Jesus. If that's you tonight and you're like, Isaiah, that is 100% me with every eye closed, which means don't look at me and don't look at the person next to you just for a few seconds. If that is you and you're like, Isaiah, I want to get my life right with Jesus. Can you be brave and do me a favor and give me a big wave so I know who I'm praying for tonight? Give me a big wave. Yes, 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 
Don't look at me, by the way. Some of you are still looking at me. Keep your eyes closed just for a moment. If you want to give your life to Jesus, give me a wave. Yes, 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 yes. Can we give these people a round of applause? This is huge, I'm telling you. Yes. What I need you to do is do me one last favour. This is the last favour I'm going to ask of you and you're not doing it for me. You're not doing it for royals. You were doing it as a first step of faith, I would say, in this incredible new relationship with God. If you said, yeah, I want to get my life right with Jesus, and you put your hand up, can you please come to the front right now? Do not hesitate. We are going to cheer you on as you come because this is why we are here. Do not wait. Do not hesitate. Amazing. Come here. Come in front of me. Yes, yes, yes. Just here. Yes. Come on. Amazing. 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 Is there anybody else just before we pray for these incredible people? Anybody else at all? I don't want to let this moment go quick. Amazing. Come come this way. Come, come this way. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. I'm telling you, this is a, a new chapter in the life of every one of these people. Whether you're returning or this is the first time, I'm telling you right now, this is the most significant decision you'll make in your life. Is there anybody else just before we pray for these people? Anybody else? Amazing. Amazing. This is you too? Oh my. Amazing. Can we give him a hand? Amazing. 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 We're going to pray a prayer. And you're not praying to me. You're not praying to Royals Church. We are praying to our Father because we have access because of what Jesus did on the cross for us. And so some of us know this prayer, but we are all going to pray it together. And it would be fantastic if you could say this after me. Heavenly Father, right now, I come to you and I pray that you would forgive me for my sin. And right now, I accept you as the Lord and Savior of my life. God, I pray that you would make a home in my heart, walk with me, talk with me, in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said amen and amen and amen. Can we celebrate these guys? This is good news. This is great news. If you want to follow Arnie Jean just this way, really quickly, she's just going to talk to you a little bit about the decision that you made. But if you could just follow Arnie Jean, she's going to take you into this room really quickly. Come on, give him a round of applause. All right, I'll need you to stand to me one more time. Just stand up one more time. I know some of you are like, don't ask me to stand one more time. This is the last time. This is the last time I'm going to ask you to do that. Everybody, I want you to hold your hands out. I want to pray for every single person in this room. God, please help us not to forget that we have access that we have access to the presence of God. And so God, I pray, Lord, that we would respond to the invitation that would say, come boldly to the throne room where we might receive mercy and grace in our time of need. And God, tomorrow we're going to need mercy and grace. The next day we're going to need mercy and grace. So God, let us not be observers, Lord. Let us be experiencers of your presence, whether it's in the car, on the way to school, wherever it might be. God, I pray, Lord, that we would remember we got the key Lord, we just have to put it in the door, open it, and experience the presence of God. Lord, that only comes from you. God, we thank you that beyond the gates, Lord, you're there. That's all we need. And so, God, I thank you right now. Let this be a reminder in every heart, in every life, in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said? And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Do you guys close with praise? Is that how we do it? Okay, we're going to end on a praise song. Come on, let's uh, get excited, clap, come to the front. Do whatever you want to do and let's praise God.